I began volunteering with Prevention Point in 2006. I have been connected with Prevention Point Pittsburgh since 1996. Pretty sure I Google searched Needle Exchange Pittsburgh, just kind of hoping that there would be a program like that out here because I was looking to do something volunteer-wise. So as soon as I landed, I started looking for where's the needle exchange, and I had anyone I met who might know of such a thing, I asked, and nobody could come up with anything. And then one day in, in the hall at the university, this guy from another department comes up to me and hands me a slip of paper with James Crow's name and phone number on it. Carolyn Acker had come to town at a certain point, and she heard about me because I had been kind of rattling around. So then we teamed up, and we have some syringes. Why don't we just go ahead and do it and see what happens? Those early years were pretty fascinating because there was much less funding available. It was card tables on the corner of Gist and Forbes in the hill. Being there on Sunday mornings, whether it was snowing or raining or freezing or hot, we were always there. We didn't have an actual biohazard container then. We had a wide mouth pickle jar to put used syringes in. A lot of it was engaging people in conversation of like, well, you know, how much are you using per day? How many needles? So it was really kind of just listening to what people needed. The police tolerated us for a long time, but at a certain point, enough people were coming that a line would form at the table and some of the nearby residents and business owners began to feel that we were like a blight on the neighborhood. So they called us into a community meeting and they saw to it that the sergeant of the local police station, the Hill District Police Station, was there too. Then they quickly exposed us as doing this terrible thing in their neighborhood. And so we explained with great care what we were doing, why we were doing it, what the effect was. And by the time it was over, everyone in the room said, oh gosh, oh I understand what you're doing. I just would rather you do it somewhere else. We were at a site in the hill and there was a woman who uh, I knew had HIV and she looked really sick. I told her she needed to go to the emergency room and she said, I'm not gonna do it. And I was like, why are you gonna die if you don't do it? And she said, they're gonna treat me like an animal. I refuse to be treated like that. This population is just so abused and so stigmatized. We just do ourselves a disservice as humans. Some of the principles of harm reduction include meet people where they're at, trust them to understand what they need and want, work in partnership. They're not clients, they're participants. We are working together on a shared project. People who deserved respect and deserve to have the tools and information that they needed to protect their own health and the health of other people that they cared about. It was fulfilling a medical necessity and giving people the right to health care. Ignoring the health of people like that puts all of our communities at risk for poor health outcomes.